and welcome to Bringing the World to Your Table. I'm Abby Gray. And I'm Megan Buto. And today we are going to take you back to some of our favorite places with our recipes. Like Italy and France, right Abby? Like Italy and France. And then we're going to tie it back to the local um, environment around here and talk about how apples and pumpkins are really prevalent and a big part of fall in New England. And did you know that now in the region of Veneto, which is, um, there's 20 regions in Italy, and the region of Veneto, which is where Venice is, yes. is the biggest growing pumpkin region in the country of Italy, but now bigger than America. That's amazing. Um, yeah, when I was reading about pumpkins and, you know, because when we think about fall in New England, of course we think about pumpkins. pumpkins. we do. Yeah, and so pumpkins are actually native to the Americas, and they were a crop that the American Indians used and were um, a big part of their eating and a big part of their nutrition and kind of just general dietary health. So it's interesting, too, because um, why don't we start cooking? Okay. And then we'll talk about some of the great... Um, benefits to eating pumpkin. Yes, yeah. that sounds great. So one of the things we're gonna make today is called pumpkin rigatoni and Italian sausage. Well, that sounds and delicious. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and two years ago, remember when we were over there, oh, I yes. think we had the pumpkin ravioli. I believe so. And yeah. pumpkin bread, it was, it became very yeah. um, prevalent. So we're cooking outside, as you can see, because yeah. of COVID-19. So we are being very uh, safe and healthy and mm -hmm. trying to, um, bring some fun things to you without uh, getting yeah. anyone sick. Yeah. So we're out here and I had to do a few things that I would normally have done um, for you, but I pre-boiled the pasta, the rigatoni, mm -hmm. and I'll go down what the ingredients are. Okay. Okay, so we have rigatoni. We mm -hmm. have one pound of Italian sausage, which I did pre-cook. Okay. Um, it looks like it's out of the casing. It is. So okay. what I did was I bought a pound of sweet Italian sausage, mm -hmm. and I always take it out of the casing for yeah. recipes like this. Yep. It's better than cutting it. Yeah. And we'll mush it up some more. Okay. And then um, I have two tablespoons of olive oil, which I already have in the pan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Four cloves of garlic, minced, and one shallot, and I actually put those together. I've already cut that up. Yeah. And then we have um, a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes, which are optional. If you don't like heat, you don't have to put them in, but it adds that special mm -hmm. yumminess. Um, we have a can of fresh of pumpkin. Mm -hmm. um, you can also roast your own pumpkins and then just take the meat out. And that for that, you recommend it's sugar pumpkin, right? They yeah. That's the best, like, cooking pumpkin. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a good cooking pumpkin. Yeah. And what I do is I just cut it in half and take the seeds out, and then I roast those oh, separately. Okay. And then I put a little, actually, maple um, syrup in it, Ooh, and I turn it over uh -huh. because then the skin gets really soft. Oh, okay. But the um, the meat gets so tender. Yeah. And about 45 minutes at 375 hmm. is what I do. Sounds good. And then we do a quarter teaspoon of dry sage, mm -hmm. and I use dry sage here because it's more concentrated. Okay. Um, coarse salt and black pepper. Nice. Okay. So I'm gonna just turn on, I left some olive oil in the pan, and I also left some grease from the... Um, oh, from cooking the sausage from earlier. From cooking the sausage, because okay. that makes it Okay, so you pre-cooked the sausage. I pre-cooked the sausage, I took it out of the casing like we talked mm -hmm. about, and I just um, browned it. Yum. So what we're gonna do is, we've got that. Oh, and that's the pasta water, so this is a big thing. Do not throw out your pasta water. Always take two cups of your pasta water before you dump your pasta, because often you need it for your sauce mm -hmm. or to get your pasta, bring your pasta back to life. And one of the things that I, I feel like was really um, emphasized when we were cooking in Italy was that do not forget to salt your pasta water. Oh, yeah. Right? Salt it like the sea. Right, exactly. Salt so your pasta water like the sea. That makes it really. And I Even if you're not cooking difference. Italian. Right, right. <laughs> Just throw it in there. <laughs> It is. It does make yeah. a big difference. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm just going to saute the shallots and the um, garlic. And we're going to get that going on my little outdoor burner here. Nice. Yeah, good catering burner. It's been good this summer. Yeah, very handy. Um, and so tell us a few other, so I know a few things about pumpkins, for instance. Like, it does help, or theoretically, mm -hmm. it helps guard against cancer. Right, yeah. Pumpkin has so, so many. Red pepper, by yeah. the way. Pumpkin has so many nutritional benefits. Um, well, it's high in fiber. Um, it has a lot of vitamins in it. Um, it is right, really good against guarding against cancer. It um, 
good for lowering your heart rate. That's right, low blood pressure. Um, and so, yeah, I think all around. It was originally brought to Europe, I think, in the 1500s. Okay. And um, you would have found it here as a Native American crop, like we talked about. And I think a native to this area are like the Wampanoags, the um, Narragansett tribes, the Algonquins, the Pequots, so several different tribes. And they would have had it growing in the fields. And so they used a lot of crops, so like winter squash. and. Um, so they really knew about the nutritional benefits. And then the oh, pilgrims yeah. would have eaten it when they came, landed in, on the Mayflower. Um, Whoa. Whoops. Yeah. Oops. Man overboard. <laughs> um, That's all right. We can no have problem. that at the end. Yeah. And then, um, and so they talk about how the pilgrims at Plymouth Plantation, which we are all familiar with, um, would have most likely eaten it though stewed or um, like, you know, not in a pie form. That right. was not originally um, traditional to the pilgrims. No, I don't think that came till much later because the pies, you right. needed butter and... <laughs> right, right, all the different, yeah, not the pilgrims. Yeah, brown sugar. But we do know somebody, um, not Abigail Gray, Chef Abby Gray, but Abigail Adams, Adams. right, was the... Yeah. So she had a famous pumpkin yeah. pie, which we will share the recipe to um, in the links. Um, she used molasses. Uh, I made that no note in the recipe. Mm -hmm. She used molasses instead of brown sugar. Common sweetener probably um, in that time. Yeah, so it's very sweet, so yeah. bring it back a little bit. Yep. And then um, I was named after Abigail Adams, which I only I, fitting. I told you. Yeah. Because my parents are big history buffs. Yes. Um, and I always liked that little tidbit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we're doing is we're, we're um, sauteing the, um, what you would have done is saute the sausage, just like it looks here, okay? And then we're going to bring in these um, shallots and the garlic. And I'm using a little bit of this pasta water instead of oil because... Are you deglazing it a little um, bit with yeah, it? Or? Well, no, I'm, I'm really just sweating them, okay. but I don't want them to stick to the pan. I see. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we are going to add the spinach, although... We are not wilting it okay. because I use, so I do have some beautiful spinach in the garden still, believe it or not, but because it was raining this morning, I didn't have time to go pick it. So I use frozen spinach. Yeah. And I always keep frozen spinach. It's such a handy thing to it have. It is. The thing about it is you have to get the water out. Right. Um, just because it's so packed yeah. with water. So you don't have to really use cheesecloth. What I do when I'm using it in a recipe like this is I just put it in a colander over a bowl. That's what I do. Put yeah. some water in. And I just really squeeze, squeeze it. Squeeze it. Yeah. And then I just put it in a paper towel because then it's still picked up a decent amount of yeah. water. And that's okay. The water's going to sweat off right here. So it won't. the reason that you want to do that is just because you don't want your sauce to liquidy because it's hard to create liquid. Mm -hmm. I'm just washing my hand off with a wipe. I think we have that here. And now what I'm going to do, <laughs> no right, the yeah. wipes are like, and now I can find them. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to add the pumpkin, well let's see. Let me just saute this around a little bit. We'll have to add, so um, if you don't throw your red peppers off the table, you can just <laughs> add them at the end. Yeah. So another couple of fun facts about um, the pumpkin that yeah. we learned is another um, Massachusetts native, Ralph, Ralph Waldo Emerson, is known on record as yeah. having grown one of the original first I am also largest. related to Ralph Waldo Emerson. <laughs> wow, we are in the presence of greatness here. Well, no, my maiden name is Emerson. <laughs> oh, right, right. Yeah, and I, I'm not just saying that. Like my dad, that was another thing. <laughs> nice, nice. Anyways, go ahead. Um, anyways, he is on record as having grown one of the like largest pumpkins. pumpkins. I think 123 and a half pounds. Yeah. Now, wasn't it wasn't it even back in the day? I thought we were reading that yeah. um, some of the pumpkins got to be like 187 pounds. Maybe. Um, really and did big. they have pumpkin growing contests that were really popular with the kids? I feel like we read that somewhere too. Yeah. I mean, to this day, you know, if you go in generally in the late summer, early fall, you have a lot of the. Um, town fairs throughout Massachusetts, which are so fun to go, and normally a really nice portion of them is the agriculture, because Massachusetts has a lot of agriculture to offer its um, citizens, and so 4-H clubs or local agriculture clubs will um, 
have vegetable growing contests, animal showing contests, and oftentimes it's, you know, who can grow the largest pumpkin or the largest squash. And I guess what we I should talk about a little bit too, are the, we can do these things during COVID, mm -hmm. um, especially one because they're outside, right? right? And um, they're local and you can get a nice six feet or 20 feet apart yeah. from people. Well, they're not having the fairs, but, oh, the um, fairs, right. yeah. but, but the what, patches are, like the oh pumpkin patches, pumpkin patches yeah, and things yeah, are, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, right, right. They're a great way to get outside and really enjoy and appreciate um, the Oops. benefits of, of a New England fall. Give me the sage. Yes. So let me just tell you, I just I had sautéed um, the shallot and the garlic, as mm -hmm. you saw. We added the um, spinach. Yeah. If you're using fresh spinach, just let it wilt, and it wilts really quickly. I usually use two bags because one bag looks like just a little cup. <laughs> And I think the bags are generally like 16 ounces, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I always add more spinach. Yeah. And then... Um, it cooks down so quick, too. So quick. Yeah. And then I added a, probably a little bit more than 15 ounce can of um, pumpkin, just a smidge mm -hmm. more. Just because with sauce, you always need a little yeah. extra, I feel, of everything. And the thing I, I think I would notice when you're looking for a pureed pumpkin in a can, because this has happened to me before, is you want to make sure, especially for a recipe like this, that you're getting just plain pureed pumpkin and not a pumpkin pie. Oh yeah, um, pumpkin puree because that would then have some of your more. You want pure pumpkin, right. otherwise you get a lot of sugar. Exactly, a lot of sugar and some other spices that you might not necessarily want for this recipe. Now I'm just going to take my hands and crumble the sausage in, mm -hmm. um, and it's already been cooked. It's already been cooked, like we said. Yeah. So what we would have done typically is just cook it out here, mm -hmm. but because we're trying to keep things moving and I don't right. have all my kitchen stuff here and I can't drain very easily. I always drain it as well. Oh, okay. I mean the fat is gorgeous because it gives a ton of flavor mm -hmm. but um, I always say during COVID I'm going to end up a whale or a waif. It just depends. So I'm trying to take the fat out of this. <laughs> healthy, healthy. So, you know, one of the things about this, we're going just back to talk about health for a few seconds, mm -hmm. is that um, a lot of these recipes are, are pretty healthy. Like yeah. the, the spinach is so good for you. The, we've told you about the pumpkin. Mm -hmm. The sausage is not actually terrible for you. It's lean pork. Okay. Um, it has really good spices in it. Mm -hmm. The red pepper is good for lots of things, including yeah. your heart. Um, sage is a great spice for you yeah. for so many reasons. Um, heart is one of them. I also think it guards against cancer. So all these things put together right. are pretty good. And then the pasta is the pasta. But like any good Italian, yeah. as you know, you don't serve 300 pounds of pasta. Right. You just serve a serving. So that's why the Italians eat pasta every day because... Right. They Yeah. Everything in moderation. I everything like in moderation. Yes. Well, yes. You know, they're very yeah, passionate. Very sensible. <laughs> <And> passionate. <laughs> okay, could you switch that? Can I have the big bowl? Mm -hmm. Alright, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna mix this now. Okay. Okay. And then so this looks pretty yeah, yummy. Looks great. Right? Mm hmm Okay. So I always put half the sauce in the bottom. Okay. Okay. So it just kind of looks like that, just mm -hmm. sauce in the bottom. And then we're going to take the pre-made rigatoni. And what I did was, um, what I typically do is I wash the pasta off right away with cold water because it takes the starch off and then it doesn't stick, stick. together yep. like glue. So it's, it's going to come undone because I yep. left it a little bit in the pasta water. But and another tip I learned is some people will say they'll put olive oil in when they cook their pasta. But then your sauce won't stick to it. Yeah, you can't. So don't, so don't do that. Never put the olive oil. Never. No. <laughs> That's what the Italians say. <laughs> um, okay, so then we have the pasta sauce at the bottom, and then we oh. have the pasta right here. Okay. okay. <laughs> and then I'm just going to put this on top. Yum. Too bad it's not smell-o-vision because it's very, <laughs> it smells very delicious. <laughs> I do a lot of Zoom classes and it's so funny because people are like, oh my God. Yeah. So do you want to mix it all the way through? Um, or do you want it to sit on the top of the pasta? 
It's a very matter of fact. I would like it to mix through. <laughs> Just trying to help out our viewers at home here. I know. She is. She keeps me grounded. Um, I think that I like to mix it through. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. It's definitely a, like a, ooh, and then what I would yeah. do is actually maybe mm -hmm. having done this for you on camera right now what and this is kind of what it looks yeah. like now this doesn't call for parmesan or anything i was just gonna ask that no because it calls for the red pepper so it doesn't uh. want the nutty flavor of the um parmesan uh-huh so i'm just gonna do a little salt a little pepper okay and then i'll plate it for you and show you what it should look like now the only thing i would say megan is i wish i'd actually kept a little bit out okay for plating purposes, like if I was doing it for an event, I would put a little bit more sauce in the center. Right in the center. Okay. Um, Still looks pretty beautiful. Yeah, and, and I'll delicious. show you. And I'll show you how to plate in a second. Great. <laughs> Welcome back. While we're going to plate our delicious pumpkin pasta rigatoni with sausage, we also have a small correction to make. Yeah, we were just reflecting on the history of the pumpkin and realizing that it was actually. Henry David Thoreau who grew the biggest pumpkin. Yes. We would hate to attribute it to the wrong um, Massachusetts uh, um, his, historical history figure. person. Right, right. <laughs> but, um, you know, all those guys kind of lived up there together. And, and isn't Walden Pond in Also near that area, yeah, yep, that where, area they, where uh, the pumpkins yeah. are. Yeah, it's such a great area and you can really, Louise May Alcott, so many people up there who had such big impacts on Massachusetts and um, kind of founding mothers and fathers. Mothers of the state, yeah. 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 Well, he probably would have liked this dish. Oh, I'm sure he would have loved it. And what and what we would do here, I would plate it like this, uh -huh. and then I might, um, I would probably serve this for two, like in the center, oh, and I serve see. it with a salad and some crusty bread. Yeah. Um, that would be really nice. Yeah. And then the other thing you could do is if you had hollowed out your pumpkins um, to get the inside, I've often, like for a fancy dinner party, I've then served whatever I made in the in the pumpkin. Amazing. Well, that brings me back to one of our trips to France. Um, oh, yes. Yes, there was a, a very, um, very fancy restaurant and they, made their pumpkin soup and then served it in a pumpkin, right? Yes, right? I guess they did so for that's a very large amount of money. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so many things you can do with pumpkins. Yes. Grow them, eat them, serve in them, admire them. And um, certainly you have a lot to do here in Massachusetts. If you are bored, take a hike or take a drive and get out and go to, <laughs> what? <laughs> You're bored, take a hike. Take a hike. Anyways. <laughs> All right. Oh, Megan. You yeah. know, before uh, before we leave today, yeah. I think we should taste. Ooh! Don't have to twist my arm. We always give the crew some, so don't worry. <laughs> I just have to get another fork. Okay. Okay. Individual forks and servings. Wow. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Let's have a little bit. Let's see what you think. Yeah. All well, right. cheers to the pumpkin. Cheers. <laughs> Let's see how this tastes. Oh. Mm. Mm. Delicious. Actually, it could use the red pepper. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. Um, yeah. Kind of to offset, the, but the pumpkin really makes it um, really creamy. Mm -hmm. It's excellent. Be careful, though. She, Megan's right. If you bought the pie filling, yeah. It would be a completely different um, palette and yes. it wouldn't taste as good with right. like the spinach and the pasta. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Enjoy. I hope yeah. you make this. <laughs>